Hi everyone, this is René from Montreal and this is my third video about working on DOSVS. And unlike the second video, I'm making this one right after the second, so what you see here is the system as I left it at the end of the second video. So on this uh, virtual machine here, the CMS DOS environment is still active. On my DOSVS virtual machine, the tape is still mounted. <clears throat> Sorry, I have to put it this back there. Uh, CP, query V, all. You can see the tape now still mounted. Mm -hmm. So maybe the first thing we're going to do is uh, unmount the tape and then we're going to run this uh, program, this uh, Fortran program that's going to call one of the routines in the library we created and populated with two subroutines. So if you want to unmount the tape, I suggest you do the following. First go to Hercules and unmount the tape from the, the mainframe, the emulated mainframe. So do Devinit 480. It was on 480 the last time. A star. This is uh, <coughs> unmounting the tape and then go on the console of the OSVS and detach the tape. Okay, so that's CP detach 280. You're gonna get the message tape detach here and you're gonna get the same message on the console of, uh, of uh, VM370. And now you have I guess uh, uh, unmounted the tape neatly and it's, it's not going to pro uh, give any error message or stuff like that, okay? So let me clean this. Go back to the console of the USVS. Now I want to run my program, okay? I'm going to keep my CMS DOS environment active here. It shouldn't interfere anyway. Uh, and I'm going to do uh, two things. First, I'm going to run this program on the USVS. And after that, I'm going to show you how to run it in CMS DOS. Okay. So, uh, where's the program? It's over here. It's called Tolly P. It's a small Fortran program. As you can see, it declares some variable. Essentially, stored data in this vector, then called the Tolly routine compute uh, statistics, average, total, standard deviation, minimum, maximum. This is very basic statistics. Uh, there, of course, in the uh, scientific subroutine package, there are much more sophisticated uh, routines and doing more sophisticated statistical analysis, but just for the purpose of this video, I don't need to go there anyway. I, I think you're not, maybe not that interested by a statistics course anyway, so so uh, here's the program. So we just call this Tolly routine that we have compiled and stored in the uh, private relocatable library. So I want to run this on the USVS, okay? So let me clear this. So I will uh, write a job for this. <laughs> so uh, maybe Tolly P DOSVS, okay? First of all, the job entry uh, statements for power, mm -hmm. totally P. Then input the job statement, totally P. Uh, run uh, a Fortran program, totally from private uh, relocatable, something like that, okay? Uh, and then the end of the job, I guess. Now, in between, I want to compile, link it in, and execute. So that's uh, the easy part, and I probably did something like that with PL1 and COBOL and even Fortran, I believe, so this is, uh, this is possibly uh, familiar material, so the first thing we do, we're going to give an option statement for the compiler telling it uh, to produce a module for the link editor, not to 
punch the module somewhere on a tape or on cards. Then we're going to call the uh, compiler on the program. Then, uh, sorry, then the link editor, LNKEDT, I believe. And then we're going to execute the program just by it. A simple exec statement like that okay now of course the link editor to do his job must know uh, must uh, take these modules you know stored in the private library to produce a loop module and executable but uh, remember I have my label already in the system my assignment already uh, on the system so uh, it means that the library, the private library, is known to the system and link at it will find the module. So it will seek for module or search for modules in this library and also in the system relocatable library to try to resolve any un external references in the, uh, the main program. Because, of course, we have stored a tally routine in the private relocatable, it's going to find it. But of course, if I, if my, if I, if, if the label was not stored on the cylinder and uh, the assignment was not there, you know, I would have to provide this assignment and the label and the extent, like I did for the defined library. You know, I would put it probably at the beginning here, before the option or just after the option. So, but I don't need to do it because I just prepare myself for that. So, now I think. I have essentially everything, so of course I have now to uh, put the, uh, the the source in this uh, jump file. So I'm going to get tally p for tra. Save. So I think it should work right now. Top. Uh, so job option. So so let's try it. Let's see what happens. SUB does tally P seems to be running. Oof. Oh, good. So let's cut the paper to see the result. Uh, e cut. That's jump number 00198. Okay. Start slowly. Don't worry about it. So, you can see that my file is reinitialized here. Okay, that's the sound, that's fine. No, uh, go this way. Uh, and then uh, let's present a unique page. Uh, all right. Uh, all right. Uh, well, the first thing we have is the execution of the compilers for here. So that's the options in effect. That's my program. And I will have most probably this uh, this thing here. Uh, are there any errors? No. Okay. And after that, I have the link editor. Mm -hmm. and that's the output of the link editor. I can see the CSEX uh, of everything. My routine is there, the Tolly routine there, and these are our system uh, uh, routines, probably an assembler. And this is the execution and the output. The first number is zero here, tells me that everything went fine. And these are the statistics. First number is the total, the average, standard deviation, minimum and maximum. So that's all fine. So it run, uh, it run very well without any problem and he found the uh, the routine okay so let me quit this and maybe hide this so that that's one way to do it I want to show you now how to run this into the CMS DOS uh, environment which means that I'm gonna do everything in the CMS virtual machine here okay not on DOS but on this virtual machine and I can even do that without DOSVS being active, okay, or being running at all. So just to show you this is true, I'm gonna 
I'm gonna shut down my DOSVS system. Okay, P end. <coughs> now like this. Uh, on batch. On batch. Uh, okay. Um, <coughs> ROD. Then batch. And then stop. Okay, clear. Now I can come here, CP, uh, log off. No, not accepted. Okay, I understand. Sharp CP, log off. And then let's quit this. Okay. So now CMS, uh, DOSVS is not running at all. If I do a query name, there's only me and no DOSVS anymore. What I'm gonna do <coughs> now, exactly the same thing. I'm gonna compile, link at it, and run the program, but from CMS this time. And because I am in this uh, CMS DOS environment, it allows me to run or execute uh, DOSVS phases on CMS without the, the virtual machine to be running at all. Okay, that's the nice thing about it. So, the first thing is to compile the uh, the, the program. It's gonna put them now. We want to, uh, to compile in Fortran, but not with the Fortran compiler of. Uh, CMS or the one on VM370, but the compiler on DOSVS, okay? So, um, I need to execute the compiler of DOSVS. So, there's an exec to do that. Actually, there's an exec for the COBOL compiler, and I just took that exec and adapted it for the Fortran compiler. So, maybe I'll make it available uh, to you. It's available also on the the cloud system so I use the same name so you do F for Tron uh, Tolly P and as you can see it just printed something here and that's actually the listing okay so let me cut the paper for that one uh -huh. so uh, maybe a presentation unique like this. Now, you can see that it's no longer DOSVS here that I have. It's CMS user because this is uh, an output from that virtual machine. But, as you can see, it's the output of the DOS Fortran compiler that I have there. So, I executed the Fortran compiler of DOSVS on my CMS virtual machine and to compile the the program and produce uh, an object module for it okay so that object module should be there in a text file like this it's not an object module to be run with the normal load command because it's not an object module produced by the compiler the Fortran G compiler for example it's an object module produced by the DOSVS Fortran compiler. So now what I have to do is to link edit this module with the library, okay? The Tali subroutine. And of course I need this CMS DOS environment to know about my private library, but if I remember well, we had that before, so if I do no, okay, so we have to define it, I guess. So, <clears throat> what about uh, the assignments? Okay, so the system relocatable is located on C, that's fine. But now, oh, let me H uh, T, I guess. So now I have to define the label, I guess. So the label, IJ SysRL, that's on C. And the data set name is DOS VS private relocatable and to connect with this guy. 
Okay. Uh, what about the other list IO sys? Mm -hmm. Okay, system input on A, system on printer. That should be okay. So now I want to link it, this Tali uh, P program, with the routines uh, stored on the library on DOSVS, even though that DOSVS virtual machine is not running. But the CMS, the US environment, knows about that library and will do the proper work. So uh, we use a command called DOS LKED. Then I type the name of the module, Tally P, and I tell this program, thus LKED, where to put the final executable, the phase, because there, the result will not be a module, a CMS module executable, it's going to be a DOSVS phase that has to be run in this environment, this special environment, so I have to store the, the phase in a library, but not a library on DOSVS, but a library on CMS. Okay, so I have to give the name of that library. Let's say PCI Lib, Private Core Image Library. That library does not exist for the moment, but if it doesn't exist, the, the command DOSLKED will create it. And say I'm going to print some output. So, as you could see, processing volume data set. So he went to that <coughs> that uh, library located on uh, the DASD to look for the uh, for the uh, Fortran subroutine to link it with, with uh, this uh, module over here. And if I take a look now, there should be. You see, there is now a DASLib PCI lib DASLib. So this is a library on CMS containing DOSVS phases. So if I want to take a look, I can take thus lib map PCI lib and put the result on the terminal. And you can see that there is a phase named Tolly P located in index two. And there is only one member for the moment in that library. And that's an executable. That's a, a phase, so that's a a DOSVS executable, okay? And it produced also an output, so let me cut the paper for that. And if I take a look here, uh, unique like this, you're gonna see that this is the output of the DOS linkage editor. The exact same output we had before when we run the job directly on the DOSVS virtual machine. Now it's the same output, exactly the same map here and everything. So that phase, TallyB, is really a DOSVS phase. And now if I want to execute, I do something a little bit like uh, for a text uh, module in CMS, but I don't use the load command, I will use the fetch command, fetch TallyP. And let's say start. Oh, not fetch, but fetch. Tally P, start. Oh, it doesn't find it. Ah, I know. That's simple. I have to define first the, the dust lib, like the text lib. Oh, dust lib, PCI lib, like this. And then I fetch Tally P. Now he's going to find it. Uh, because if I don't specify this, he's going to look for Tolly P on the DOSVS system. Or it's not there, of course, so uh, Tolly P start over here. And as you can see, it executed and produced an output. I can cut the paper to look at the output now. And again, uh, maybe like this and page unique. It's going to be just the output, huh? the zero and all the numbers that I had before, okay? So, that's it. So, as you can see, if you have a library on the, the OSVS, the 
which you took a lot of time to build, I guess, or something like that, you can use it directly on CMS using the uh, CMS uh, DOS environment. And that's actually what I do on the cloud system. You know, if I go on the cloud system, uh, like this, log on, like that. Uh, maybe I have a flu. That's, uh, okay. Now uh, I have a DOSVS environment over there. There is a DOSVS system available in the cloud. It's not the five pack of George Shedlock, but it's my own uh, DOSVS system, which is not that far from the, the one of George Shedlock. And I have a personal command to activate the CMS DOS environment. I call it DOS on. As you can see, it's gonna link uh, the system residence disk and another one. Set some logical units and everything. Set the private library labels. And now I'm ready to work with my DOS VS system. Uh, if you look, if we look at the, uh, it was C, I believe. Mm -hmm. You can see the data set on this particular DASD, the page data set, like on the five pack. But there's also the recorder file, the hard copy, and my private libraries, the core library, the relocatable library, and a private source library, okay? And if I want to take a look at the relocatable, for example, uh, like this, let me sort, you're gonna see that now there's not just two members, but the entire uh, statistical, uh, not statistical, scientific subroutine package, and there's a lot of routines in it. So if we look a little bit, we see that, and the core, you can see the core the module here. <coughs> Sorry again. Uh, and then at the end, there should be the tally. Uh, there's a lot of these, and the tally should be there at the end. Uh, Tolly is right there, okay, uh, HT. I also have a, a core library, so if I do deserve uh, CD term, now these are phases, and they are the phases of another uh, package, the statistical package called BMDP, okay, so because I have these phases in the DOS VS system, it's not running because it's hard to run a DOS uh, VS system on the cloud anyway because I need to operate from the console. But I don't need that system to be running for me to use these phases or the, uh, the modules because I can access this with the CMS DOS environment and I have an exec for example called BMDP, I believe BMDP. Somewhere, yeah, that's a an exec that's going to take essentially an input and run the proper phase from the statistical package. So I can do that on the cloud without having my DOS VS system uh, active. And uh, it's interesting because at some point, I don't know if I said that in a previous video. My memory is not what it used to be, but. Uh, at some point, I wanted to install that uh, statistical package on on uh, CMS, but then I realized I don't need to install it because I had done this on the OSVS, and I could access the, the whole package from CMS using the CMS DOS environment. So, so if you are uh, creating any kind of stuff on DOSVS, storing it in uh, libraries and stuff like that. You can use that stuff and that work inside CMS too, especially for development, I guess, and uh, that's gonna work. So if you wanna know more about the CMS DOS environment, you have to look at this uh, unavoidable manual, the CMS user's guide, and you just go to the chapter on it called uh, developing DOS programs under CMS. That explains the CMS DOS environment and everything. And you can even use uh, vSAM datasets on uh, DOS VS if you wish. 
Okay, so I'm gonna stop here because I think I have said essentially everything that I wanted to tell you about the US working on the USVS. How to manipulate libraries, how to create, uh, populate them with modules and things. Things are similar for the core libraries or the source library. Uh, there are still some other stuff on the USVS that I could talk about at some point, but I don't know. It will depend on you. Anyway, uh, if there are any subject that you would like me to talk about, you may tell so in the comments or tell Moshiks. And uh, if I can do something about it, and if I can present a video about it, I'll be happy to do it, okay? So that's what I wanted to uh, tell you. And that's the final video of this uh, series. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Well, thank you so much, Rene. This was extremely interesting. I learned a ton about DOS VS, or as some people call it, VSE, or DOS VSE, or VSE ESA, or Z VSE. Um, a lot of stuff that I didn't know before. Uh, DOS VS and all the follow-on products in this family, product uh, operating system family, have never really been my strength, but I've really been learning a lot about it. And I start to appreciate it's simple, simple, and elegant beauty. Uh, things just work. They're much simpler than in than in MVS. Even at uh, compared to MVS like 3.8, things are much simpler. The fact that it's all patch simplifies the whole operating system, and you really know what's going on, and you really have great overview of the operating system. And especially when you run it under VM 370, such as the one here in the Moshix VM 370 mainframe out in the cloud. Uh, then it, it becomes really simple to uh, to work with it and to uh, make it uh, through VM370 make it become an interactive environment. So thank you, Rene, for this series. It's been uh, most enlightening. I'm sure that our viewers uh, learned a lot too, not just me. And I hope you're going to continue making videos because uh, your wonderful style of teaching, patient, soothing voice, and uh, and uh, your knowledgeable and the patient approach to uh, to teaching is just uh, wonderful. I, I certainly know why you're a professor. I think you chose the right profession. So again, thank you very much, Rene, and thank you to all our viewers. If you like this particular video or the whole series, please uh, uh, clap your hands for Professor Rene Ferland by, uh, by pressing on the thumbs up button. I'm sure he, he will appreciate that. If you have any questions to Rene or to myself, or to anybody else in the community, then please post uh, comments in the uh, in the section below this video. And if you haven't subscribed to the Moshex Mainframe channel yet, then well, then you should. And we hope to see you uh, come back as if you were again. Thank you very much. Goodbye.